Listen on up. Somebody got something to say. Have you ever wondered, have you ever thought how many federal installations there is across the North American continent? Now, I'm assuming that everybody knows the difference between county, state, federal, government. How many border agents do you think there is? How many federal agents, including NSA and UN and FEMA? How many state police do you think it is across the United States? How many city police do you think it is? We're talking three shifts 24-7. How many sheriff's departments do you think it is across the United States? How many prison facilities? How many military? How many United Nations and United States military installations do we have across the United States? That's unconstitutional all the way, even our own military. Training, but active bases, they're not supposed to be among the citizens. How many supervision departments do you think there is across the United States? Probation, bonding, halfway houses, work release programs, anger management, DUI schools, DMV. How many of those supervision are departments do you think it is? How many utility departments do you think it is? How many utility employees? How many postal departments and postal employees and services? How many neighborhood watches? How many pastors is there around here who's been collecting data on the members of their congregation for years and giving it to the authorities as a show of cooperation? How many websites? How many chatting communities? do you think there is? All of these places, all of these even family members, neighbors, all of these places are collecting information on you and all of these places, if you're somebody like me, any of those places that I just named can cause my death. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's how much surveillance you got around you and I'm not, I didn't even get into the to the uh, uh, super hundreds of megapixel cameras that they've got on their cell towers. I didn't get into the frequencies that they read each of us like we're little, little, uh, we're in a matrix and we're one little spot in that matrix. There was a movie one time called Tron. That kind of got me to thinking a little bit about how small we could be in a, in a supercomputer beast in that intri intricate circuitry that puts each living thing with its own frequency. It's like having each thing with different colors. You can spot them. The supercomputer picks it right out no matter where it is and what it's doing. And that's what's happening to you. You can't even think. You can't even think to yourself without being in danger of your thoughts being read and recorded and even changing your mind while you're thinking those thoughts. They do have that technology. Seriously, they do. Do you know that you can't buy water that doesn't have fluoride? It's illegal by fines, heavy fines that go into the millions of dollars that bankrupts the business because they didn't want to put fluoride in the water. And it imprisons them, state, federal, even the Postal Service gets into it. The FDA, for selling water without fluoride. And fluoride is a toxic waste that is. It's proven today, and it was proven for many, many years in laboratories, that it is the number one, number one contributor to all cancers. Mm. The number one contributor to all cancers. And it's been proven in let cancer research begun the not when it begun with the knowledge of fluoride cancer cures date back close to the first part of the 1900s maybe the 20s just doesn't coming up in my head right now I just can't remember it I can remember a documentary that I saw and it might have been uh, 17 or 27 or something like that I just can't remember for sure but the early part of the 19th century they were locking people up, putting them in sanatoriums, 
ruining their lives, discrediting them, threatening their family members, all the same things that they do to people today. And they can take over the controls of your automobile. There's a lot of people with these experiences, a lot, and they're life-threatening experiences. If it didn't take their lives, look at that journalist, Haskins. They took over his sports car, speeded it up, slammed crazy driving, and then turned it almost on a 90-degree angle, crashed it into a tree. And the witnesses said that after the car was sitting there for a few moments, then it blew up and blew the engine 50 feet from the car. They killed Haskins. He had done ruined the careers of a couple of generals, and uh, he was bringing out some truth, and he was a good man. He was another good man that they killed. That's why we got so many good people today that's trying to stay out of their reach and hide from them. They pollute the free waters all across the earth, and they pollute your paid-for drinking water and bathing waters. This stuff is a human and life weapon of death and profit. They also have it in the chemtrail aerosols. And they pretend to protect you and act like they care by putting dozens of printed warnings that you seldom read or understand. And very few of you ever look at that crap. Or you look it up to see what it really is. And they put the warnings on the cans. And then they spray chemtrails over top of you and deny they're even doing it. Black children and adults were bound to tables and chairs and sprayed with some of the stuff you use. And they were sprayed with these chemicals until the poisons killed them. Our children, copper color races found here, were tied and bound while they sprayed these chemicals on them until they died. This is stuff you got to dig on. I mean, you hear about all these experiments, man, the syphilis, the HIV, the cancer, this, the cowboy and Indian gun your ass down in the street experiment. Listen again. Some of the stuff you use. And they were sprayed with these chemicals until the poisons killed them. Poisons killed them. and chairs and spray and read or understand and very few of you ever look at that crap or you look it up to see what it really is. And they put the warnings on the cans. And then they spray chemtrails over top of you and deny they're even doing it. Mm. Black children and adults were bound to tables and chairs and sprayed with some of the stuff you use. Wow. And they were sprayed with these chemicals until the poisons killed them. So what does that tell you? If they're doing experiments on so-called black people, that means that the chemicals that they're... You know what I'm saying? Subsequently dropping whatever's coming out of the process of the beta testing. The chemicals that they end up dropping have been tested on the melanated people. One more time. Listen up, man. He's going to say this and just keep the shit pushing. But you're going to have to meditate on it with due meditation. That you seldom read or understand and very few of you ever look at that crap. Or you look it up to see what it really is. And they put the warnings on the cans. And then they spray chemtrails over top of you and deny they're even doing it. Listen up. Black children and adults were bound to tables and chairs and sprayed with some of the stuff you use. And they were sprayed with these chemicals until the poisons killed them. Poisons killed them. You're being poisoned, Indian. They poisoned your Indian ass when they got here, Indian. Copper color racist found here. All you got to do is pick up a dictionary. Published in 1828. Noah Webster. Look up the definition of American. And we've read it many times and you read it now. It's the Negroes that were found here. It's the copper color racist. Grandma Penny looking people. Grandma, Penny, ruddy, copper people that were found here by the European. But who's the real European? It's the other dark, melanated people that rule Europe. That rule all throughout, you know what I'm saying? This 
Spain and Portugal and all that, they were looking like you. And they used these people as mercenaries until these people declared their independence in 1776. And in 1828, 40 years later, in their dictionary, they wrote the definition of an American, of the person of this land, the American. And they said it's the Negro. It's the copper color races that we found here. And what did they do? They experimented on you by tying you and your mothers and your fathers to tables and blowing these chemicals on them until they died. Then they spray it in the air. Then they put it in your in your uh, water and, and, and put it in, in all your food so they know it works on you. Because they've already tied you to tables and chairs and tested it. Read or understand and very few of you ever look at that crap. Or you look it up to see what it really is. And they put the warnings on the cans. And then they spray chemtrails over top of you and deny they're even doing it. Black children and adults were bound to tables and chairs and sprayed with some of the stuff uh. you use. And they were sprayed with these chemicals until the poisons killed them. Come on, man. Then they were studied. Their bodies wow. were studied for the effects on bodies to find the most dangerous, the quickest working, the invisible and the difficult to detect poisons. So then they studied your black ass to make sure they got the most lethal out of it. Then they put it in your food. People, 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 wake up. Then they spray you with it. People, wake up. If they poison you then, they're poisoning you now. It's a frequency war. He's going to get on the frequencies and the harp and the CERN. It's a frequency war and you got to choose up and vibrate up. I know you're going through a hard time, my people, but this is it. This is for all the marbles, man. If you got any strength less left, then choose up. Don't waste your time just to go out and be slaughtered and go crazy. But it's time for you to vibrate again with your environment because that's going to crystallize you. He's going to drop all these people talking a bunch of shit and ain't nothing changing. Well, guess what? If your copper color, if your tribal behind becomes tribal, you don't think change is imminent? What's their number one fear? Tribes being tribes. It's all good when the Indian doesn't know they're an Indian. They think they just got here from Africa. But when the Indian becomes tribal again, they know they're on their land again. What happens to these people's security? That's their that's all their greatest fear. So he's going to talk about being invaded. We're being invaded. We're being invaded by by bullshit and murderers. Well, motherfucker, you came here murdering. Don't complain now about murderers. The most I said, don't kill, don't steal. The first thing you do is kill and steal. And then a hundred years later, these niggas is murdering. They're going crazy. We're being invaded. No, you are the invader that came murdering and you're getting, you're reaping what you sowed. This is your harvest season. And this is our redemption season. Choose up. Because folks, they use only the finest ingredients for their poison toxicities mm. for their unsuspecting people, citizens and test subjects. They use only the best for us folks. Huh. These genocidal criminal masterminds are making us sicker and sicker and right out murdering us from all directions at once. In 1960, the cancer rate in America was 1 in 26. That included all known cancers at the time. In 2015, it was approximately 1.7 in 3. Wow. That's pushing 2 in 3. When they bombed Fukushima with them plasma cannons and caused that tsunami and tidal wave, the cancer started going up then. I, for one, said back then that in five years the cancer rate would go to two and three in America because it was about one in three when Fukushima happened. It, I said it would go to two in three in five years and it would go to approximately three out of three in ten years because it continues to build, it continues to strengthen, and it never goes away. You can't live long enough to outlive it. 
So you folks need to understand what's going on. You need to understand who's doing it to you. And this ain't going to stop people. You need to get your heads together to figure out how to put a stop to this. And this is only one, one topic. You need to understand Trump knows all about this. Trump knows all about it. And he's not doing anything about the fluoride. He's not doing anything about the chemtrails. Not doing anything about the electromagnetic frequencies because I, for one, can tell when they got the power turned up. It's a constant all the time. They don't take breaks. The only time they might take a break, and I think the cell towers still work, is when they shut a power grid down to tie it in all to one circuit board. Because every power grid in America can be controlled from one monitor. And you all need to understand that. Every cell phone company, every tower, it can all be controlled from one monitor. Hey. Jesuits have been planted, Masons have been planted in the Baptist church. They've been planted throughout all the churches. You got one person in that church. Now they act just like everybody else, but they won't allow anybody. I tried to go into churches in Tennessee, three different Baptist churches I tried to go into, and I tried to tell them people about the Masons and the Jesuit order and the Illuminati and what's going on in this world, and none of them wanted anything to do with me. I mean, here, I even got uh, one guy act like he wanted to beat me up out in the church parking lot. I think he might have been a deacon or something or another. And the preacher patted me on the shoulder and said, oh, oh, okay, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay. Folks, the people that y'all are looking up to ain't telling you the straight of things, and they're keeping you held a spiritual and a mental captive. Hmm. Captivity, captivity for the so-called Negro. Captivity, captivity. Let's keep it going. I got a buddy that says he believes it's a simulation. Hey, I'm beginning to lean more and more in that direction all the time, that it's a controlled environment, all lock, stock, and barrel. It might be a matrix system, just like all the light system that we got up over top of our heads in the firmament. You folks, I'm going to try to lay a few more things on you here now. So, things continue downhill, speeding towards worse conditions. And the truth is being hidden from you while you live in a fantasy world that you believe is the absolute truth. I'm not saying not to be a Christian. I'm not saying not to have a good spirit. I'm not even saying not to have a role model that you are so attached to that nothing can interfere not even reality, I'm saying. That's when you need to start looking at things in a more rational and a more logical thought process, folks. If time hadn't been going on for so many years and years and the same thing is over and over and over again and Christians are steadily being killed all across the earth and put down and put down in America is almost up, folks. We're already friggin' occupied. <laughs> We're all ready occupied see he thinks he's occupied look at the cognitive dissonance he doesn't see the people that are actually invaded in his mind he's the one being invaded now see these people they 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 have this thing man they they can't really settle on reality because they are about their own survival they have to be saved He's worried about his safety, not yours. We're already occupied. <laughs> He's worried about his own survival. Hold on, man. We want to go. We want to go. Uh, let me go to this Virginia house, man. He's worried about his own survival, his own safety. They always been. This is 1832. All right. Same frequency. We're being invaded. What about us? Cognitive dissonance. Man, love to medicine, man. Man, breaking a wonderful series down on cognitive dissonance. Now, this is from Henry Brown, Virginia House of Delegates, 1832. We got it before. Let's get it again like it's the first time. Break the spell. This is from Robert Salem, 
Holbrook, all right? Now, this is a quote from Henry Brown, Virginia House of Delegates in 1832. Again, 1828. Definition of American. You got to tie this together so you know when they say slaved or enslaved Africans, they're putting it in brackets because that's not what he said. They're trying to interject their own thought. He never called you an African because this is only 1838. And you know. Like I said, and always say, 1828, you have the Webster Dictionary. We're not going crazy here. We, we, you know what I'm saying? We ain't, we ain't pulling some shit that you can't pull up. So if 1828, the definition of an American is a Native of America originally found here, originally applied to the aboriginals. We know we're the original. We dropped that ad. We know we're the originals because we're only talking originally and original people. Negro, this is you. The copper color races. Who else fits this shit? Are you an enslaved African or are you the copper color race found here? Go, quick, quick, quick. Are you... An enslaved African. Are you a homeborn slave? Is that what you were created to do? Because that article here, this quote right here in 1832 from Henry Brown in the Virginia House of Delegates, 1832, what does it say? We have as far as possible. We've used every possibility we can conjure up that we can meditate on. We've done our best. We've used Manifest Destiny bullshit. We use the uh, Papal Bulls, the Doom Diverses to invade, search out, to seek out, to take your kingdoms, dukedoms, principalities, and put you in perpetual servitude, slavery. So now you're a slave. Now they're referring to the who as a slave? A noun. A native of America, originally applied to the originals or copper color races found here. Keyword. So if you're found here, can they tell you where you're from? If they just found you here, can they tell you who you are and where you're from? Can they tell you history if they just found you here, Negro? Wake up. You've been invaded and given a history. You've been reprogrammed with a different program. They just found the copper color races <laughs> that are indigenous to this land because it's their promised land. You were found here by Europeans. But Europeans are not white people. Hint, hint. Because they are not originals to that land, are they? So don't give them that. Europa is not white, is she? So this is a new history that they want to write a whiteness into it or a darkness into it because they're not even white. White means pure. Pure people wouldn't poison you. Wakey, wakey. But the definition of an American. Are the original people, the copper color races. Found here by the Europeans, but now applied to the descendants of Europeans born in America. So now we're watching a descendant of the invader. Now we're watching a descendant of that which is calling himself an American, right? You can't tell him shit, right? He can only tell you a bunch of shit, right? Because he thinks he's American. He's not claiming European. He's not claiming any country there. Because he knows he's not even from there. So he's getting nice and cozy in your land. Telling you that he's being invaded. And put down and put down in America is almost up, folks. We're already friggin' occupied. We are already occupied. Ah. Well, we are the copper color races found here. 
by the Europeans. So we are already occupied by definition of the 1828 Noah Webster Dictionary. So we are not being occupied. The copper color race, according to definition, is being occupied. And just because you want to sweep it under the rug and run and trounce over these people and take their resources, it becomes, oh, but we, right? Christianity is a religion of we all. Convert or die, nigga. We all. Convert or die, nigga. We all are one. Convert or die, nigga. It's a duality. It's a forked tongue, English. A forked tongue, which means it goes both ways. You are the copper color races that are being invaded. How do you know? Because their descendants are now being called American. They've taken your titles, but now applied to the descendants of Europeans born in America. So he's going to say it out of his own mouth a little later in this same old uh, video. He's going to say, man, you know what I'm saying? As long as you're born here and you have a good heart, it's your land. He's going to say, as long as you have a good heart, man, it's yours. Just like Christianity. God is yours if you have a good heart. No, the creator has a formula for you. And if you come over here killing and stealing, the creator is not yours. You do not have a covenant. And your so-called good heart now, Mr. American, only goes so far because... You think you're being invaded. If you had a good heart, your entire heart would be restoring the copper color races that were found here by the Europeans. Instead of jacking their titles to the descendants of the Europeans now born in America. If you had a good heart, you would say, let's return what we've stolen from these people. If I have a good heart, I would say, damn, my great granddaddy took your great granddaddy's wallet. And I have it on my shelf like a trophy. And I'm saying we, it's our wallet. Someone is now trying to take our wallet. See, you want us to go rah, rah, crazy? Because you're telling us as a European born in America, jacking the title of American, that you're now being invaded, fool. That you're now being invaded, fool. The same thing is over and over and over again. And Christians are steadily being killed all across the earth. And put down and put down in America is almost up, folks. We're already friggin' occupied. We're already occupied? That's like saying, hey, man, um, I, I know my great-granddaddy took your great-granddaddy's wallet. But yeah, whatever, man. Somebody's now trying to break in our house and take our wallet. I'm like, nah, Nick. Um, clearly, it's my wallet because your great-granddaddy stole my great-granddaddy's wallet. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, look, man, we we been here now. I got the wallet on my uh in my trophy case, so it's it's mine too. I have a good heart, so it's my wallet now too. I mean, where else am I gonna go? How am I gonna pay for my McDonald's if I don't use your great granddaddy's wallet? The resources that's coming out of your great granddaddy's wallet is keeping me alive, so now it's mine too. The resources of your land. The resources of your land, copper color races found here. The resources of your land, Negro, is keeping them alive. So now they say, well, it's ours. We're now being invaded. Let's all work together. <laughs> the only way we can work with you as copper color races, this is just, here's a message. Y'all thought y'all was getting a message from him. They getting a message from us. If you want to work and cooperate with the copper color races found here, you might want to acknowledge that everything has been stolen from them for your survival. And restore these people as the creator's seed that was stolen and massacred. Then these people might start to trust you. Maybe you have their intentions at heart. Maybe the creator is moving your ruach. Until then, you ignore the copper color races. You claim to be American. And these copper color races go tribal. And they're not going to say, oh, I understand you're the descendant of the European born here. You must be American too. 
they're going to say, clearly, you have no regard for what actually happened. Clearly, you must be suffering from cognitive dissonance. <laughs> Love to medicine, man. You know, what's the definition of cognitive dissonance, man? Let's just get it quick. Just so we're real clear. Cognitive dissonance. In the field of psychology, cognitive dissonance is the mental discomfort. He has a mental discomfort thinking that we're being invaded and ignoring the fact that we've already been invaded. You have a mental discomfort going back in real time to say, let me restore what actually happened, whether I feel like I have something to do with it or not. I know the creator would be super duper pleased if I start to restore these copper colored races that were found here by us instead of jacking their titles as descendants because the papal bull told us to because manifest destiny the strongest survive and all this other bullshit says it's okay to kill and steal that's never okay with the creator and until you come clean you cannot cooperate with the copper colored races waking up vibing up and tribing up because those are the Americans. This is their land. This is our land. There is no other illusion about that shit. It's clear to everybody across the plane who the originals of this land is. And it's even right here in your dictionary. Yeah, man. Cognitive dissonance. It's a mental discomfort. Psychological stress experienced by a person who simultaneously holds two or more contradictory beliefs. <clears throat> oh boy. So this guy believes that the shit is hitting the fan. This guy believes that you need to suit up. This guy believes that he has the drop. He got the he he knows he's not spinning on a ball. He knows it's getting real. He knows you gotta do something. He's trying to wake you up in his way, in his abstract way. Hey, wake up, guys. But then he's bringing you right back into the illusion. We're being invaded. We are the ones that have been invaded. We need to do something against them. Over again, and Christians are steadily being killed all across this earth. And put down and put Christians down. are being killed across this earth. But what happened to the copper color races found here by the European? I'll wait. I mean, what was Henry Brown talking about four years after they wrote this definition of the copper color races found here? What did Henry Brown say? We have as far as possible closed every avenue by which light may enter the copper color races mind. They say slave. You know, they made the copper color races slaves because the copper color races were found here. And now. They've been put in captivity on their own land, like Dr. King told you, eh? We have, as far as possible, closed every avenue by which light might enter the Negro's mind. If we could extinguish their capacity to see the light, how do you do that? How do you extinguish an entire tribe's capacity to see the light? Does it have to do with sorcery and spells and poison? Our work would be complete. So they have a job to do. In 1832, they have a job to do on the copper color races that they said in 1828. They're, this is four years. This is four years prior. So we're working with the same context. We're in context. We have as far as possible closed every avenue by which light may enter the slave's mind, the copper colored Negro's mind. They've closed every avenue. Meditate on that. When you think drop is crazy, when you think drop nation is off our gourd, spinning out of control, we're not on the ball with you. We're firm. We're fixed and immovable. We see it coming. We feel it. We're using our senses again, repeatable and observable science. And Henry Brown is telling you in 1832. We have as far as possible closed every avenue by which light may enter the slave's mind. If we could extinguish, if we could extinguish the capacity to see the light, 
If we could extinguish the capacity to see the light, our work would be complete. They would be on the level with the beasts of the field and we would be safe. If we could extinguish the Negro's capacity to see the light, our work would be complete. Yeah, they got a job to do. They're doing it today. You have cognitive dissonance if you don't think they're poisoning you. And that dude got pop cognitive dissonance if he thinks that we are being invaded. And America is almost up, folks. We're already friggin' occupied. We've been occupied. We've been occupied. You have cognitive dissonance. You hold two or more simultaneously contradictory beliefs, ideas, or value. I know you got the value to survive and get people together, but you don't have the values to return what you've stolen from the copper colored races. You still want to claim their land, don't you? Oh, we're being occupied. That means it's yours, right? That means you're an American, right? No, you're a descendant of Europeans born in America, invading America. You are not American. You have cognitive dissonance. The occurrence of cognitive dissonance is a consequence of a person's performing an action that contradicts personal beliefs, ideas, and values, and also occurs when confronted with new information. So because of the new information that he is not an American and that the originals or copper color races were found here, not Africa. Here, you're not enslaved Africans. You were found here. And if they can't tell you who you are, how can they tell you who you're not when you tell them we are the kingdom of Americans that you just found here? We are the so-called Negro. We are the copper color tribes. We are the seeds of Hawa. And you have cognitive dissonance because you're confronted by new information that contradicts your beliefs and ideas. Propose that human beings strive for internal psychological consistency in order to mentally function in the real world or the illusion. Internal psychological consistency. That's what they strive for so that they can inside internally be consistent psychologically without going crazy in their version of the real world. In his version of the real world, he's an American. But is he a copper color race? In his version of the real world, in his cognitive dissonance, he's an American. But is he a copper color race found here by the European or is he a descendant? Just because they write it in the dictionary that they can graft themselves in, does it make it the real world? And just because they've extinguished your capacity to see the light, is their work complete? Have they extinguished your capacity? They said, if we could extinguish, that means they know they can't. So their work would never be complete. And you will never be on a level with the beasts of the field. And they will never be safe. Plain and simple, folks. Only deranged idiots deny reality and reason fantasy to be their future, as did all the generations before you who hid behind the Bible story that's the sole purpose of that book is to capture the weaker spirits and control the minds and hands of those who, who could make all things to be better. But they've got to put their hand to something. Your trouble is that you don't want to get involved. So you hold to fake promises and bullshit. Prophecy and today's prophets, none of which is causing any good change in anything. And they're using just words and talk. And they will never change anything for the better of humanity. They're after the dollar bill, plain and simple, that's it. Now that's absolute. A million years ago, maybe. What God is that to today? A million years ago, a whole bunch of strings of humanity, and that's the same God 
that's the same book, that's the same control. Folks, y'all need to start waking up a little bit and asking yourselves a few questions. Here's something for you. You can ask God, ask your God, say, God, give us, give us grace to accept with serenity the things that cannot be changed. Now, for the people that claim faith, then why not ask for courage to change the things which should be changed and wisdom to distinguish the one from the other. And a guy named Reinhold Niebuhr, who lived 1892 to 1971, he's one. The only way to change the reality. You don't like the world you're living in. There's only one. It's either this or that. The creator of this earth is not two ways about it. The creator of every tree behind this man. The creator of the seed. The creator is not a duality. You don't get to kill and steal and have peace. You don't get to be a product of an invasion and have peace. If you want to have peace, Mr. Man, there's only one way. You must restore the copper color races that were found here. Because they are the antennas. They are your safety. And just like William or uh, Henry Brown is worried about his safety. He's backwards pimping, right? Because the only way he could be safe is if the tribes are restored. The only way the tribes can be saved from the static is if they are restored between them and the creator of all. When we got severed and our trees got severed, when we severed ourselves by going after hijacks and breaking rule number one, don't put no power before your power. When we severed ourselves and had to suffer the consequences of Deuteronomy 28, Then that opened up a whole shitstorm, man. And this is the result of it. Other folks claiming your land. Other folks that are descendants claiming your land. Other folks claiming to be American. Everybody wants to be down with this. But in reality, this only belongs to a copper color tribe. And it's in their dictionary. And in order for it to belong to them, they must say, but now apply to the descendants of Europeans born in America. That's the new definition. That's the new thing, right? That's the new tune they want to put on you, right? <laughs> cognitive dissonance. A theory of cognitive dissonance, 1957, Leon. Festinger proposed that human beings strive for internal, that's their own personal psychological consistency in order to mentally function in the real world. That a person who experiences internal inconsistency tends to become psychologically uncomfortable and so is motivated to reduce the cognitive dissonance either by changing parts of the cognition to justify the stressful behavior. So they start changing and flipping stuff as Oh, we're being invaded. We're being occupied. Just to justify the stressful behavior of not actually being American. Or by adding new parts, new parts, a new frequency to the cognition that causes the psychological dissonance. And by actively avoiding social situations and contradictory information that are likely to increase the magnitude of the cognitive dissonance. So they start to... You know what I'm saying? Dodge around reality just to, you know, be in their hijack. Just to be in the hijack that, yeah, it's okay to be a descendant and be an American. I mean, can I just go to China and be Chinese because I was born there? I don't care what they system say. I mean, what does the China, the, the actual native of China have to say about that? 
Oh, anybody can walk and tread on your land, fuck it all up, and claim to be Chinese. And claim to be American. You can come here, fuck it all up, kill all the people, poison the people, do a video about poisoning the people, and still claim the title of the people while you do it. And still claim the title of the people while you do it. That's cognitive dissonance. When it wrote that, Thomas Jefferson said, when a government can no longer serve its people, that is the duty of its citizens to rise and revolt. And what does that mean? If Christians get a free ride, they're, they're out of the equation. The money-making ones are because they're with the bad guys, folks. They're pe preaching and teaching you holding on to a bunch of stuff to stay your hands. They know what they're doing. They don't believe in the God that they preach about. They don't believe in the Jesus that they preach about. <laughs> I'm sounding a warning here to all who profess Christianity. You better friggin' hear me. You bigwig bullshit Christians and you who make money from any aspect off the Bible story, I know that you don't believe in any God at all except the gods, the images on your money and your organization, letterhead, and so to speak. And whatever corporation, and I know you, whatever corporation, they make you feel protected, but not by the God your bosses make, make up to fool you into fearful subjection. Now that's what some of, that's where some of you are caught. You fear, you fear their God, you fear Lucifer. That's why you're false prophets. Even you know that the new world order kills their opposition. And once you start working for them, there ain't no quitting. Once you start deceiving people for their uh, military and the government propaganda bullshit, covering up assassinations, covering up the actions of the heart machine, covering up what the particles and the chemtrails are turning us into. You cover that stuff up. You don't believe in no God at all. And there really is but a few holdouts against the new world order that profess Christianity. There's a bunch of them holding out who don't really profess Christianity. They're just good and decent folks like they're accustomed to killing all the time. They don't start wars, and they are the less confused, the more nice and the more caring peoples of this fucking flat earth. They are the last holdouts before America is going to fall under siege. The rich Christians care not, but you're going down, folks. The superstars of Christianity are a big part of the New World Order, lock, stock, and barrel, period. If you knew all of Billy Graham, a 33rd degree Mason, you folks don't have a clue as what's going on in this world, and you're sticking to something that you don't have that many clues about either. It is, my warning is going out to the small church, the true owners of this land whether it is by your heritage of blood, wow. but also if your heart is in it. <laughs> if your heart's in it and you live here, it's yours. Whoa. Small church. The true owners of this land, whether it is by your heritage of blood, but also if your heart is in it. If your heart's in it and you live here, it's yours. Any questions? Now, what part of the game is that? What part of the game, when did this shit get introduced into the, the overall framework of how shit actually works in reality? He opens your mind by telling you some, some shit about chemtrails and then he closes you back in the illusion just like that by telling you if you have a good heart, you're an American. Oh, if you have a good heart, your heart's into it, you like it here, it's yours. Now, what the fuck is this motherfucker the birthright to send out a public service announcement telling everybody 
that your land, copper color race, is anybody's land as long as they uh, like it here and they self-proclaim to be righteous. Who's about either? It is my warning is going out to the small church, the true owners of this land. The true owners of this land, motherfucker. Sorry, man. You got earmuffs, earmuffs. I ain't even cursing. Because if I was cursing, you'd be dead. You'd be dead, nigga. If I was cursing you, you'd be dead. So don't get, you know, don't get it fucked up with they English, man. Fuck they English. Fuck they English. Fuck it. Now listen, man. Listen. Listen, man. American. A native of America originally applied to the original people, the copper color Negroes, the tribes found here by these Europeans, but it's now applied to descendants of Europeans born in America. And if we could take these copper color races and close every avenue by which light enters their mind, the Negro mind. If we can close every avenue, every avenue by which these people will receive light, information, connection to the creator. In other words, if we can sever them from their creator forever. If we could extinguish the capacity to see the light, which means what? They've severed you from your source. If we can sever the Negro from their source, from their great ever present energy. From their energy, their frequency and vibration. If we can hijack their frequency. If we can get them to put their energy into a church. And not into the creator and the creator's vibration or law. I don't even like the word law. I don't like speaking English referring to my vibration. I know the laws of feeling. And when you're in that frequency, you know the dance. You know the flow. You know how to shut it down once a week. At least to vibrate with your creator and reboot and crystallize above the barrier. You know how to not kill, not steal, not put, not call another daddy, daddy, another mama, mama. But if they can cut you off, if they can cut you off from this realization, if they can give you cognitive dissonance while giving themselves cognitive dissonance. As far as possible, close every avenue by which you can see any light, any information. Extinguish the capacity to see the light. Your capacity. Extinguish your capacity to see the light. To be connected. Then their work would be complete. And you would be on the level of the beast in the field. And then we would be safe. Well, who's worried about safety? The descendants of Europeans born here claiming titles because they want to keep claiming the title. So he can tell you all the shit he wants. And then at the end of the day, he still claims your title. At the end of the day, he still claims the title of the copper color race is found here. As his own. And he tells you right out of his motherfucking mouth that it's his home because he believes in it. It's his home because he, you know, feels he's upright and he can take it. Your granddaddy's wallet that his granddaddy took, it's still his wallet. Because, uh, let him tell you himself. Billy Graham, a 33rd degree Mason. You folks don't have a clue as what's going on in this world and you're sticking to something that you don't have that many clues about either. That many clues where we know who we are and you can't tell us who we're not. It is... My warning is going out to the small church, the true owners of this land. The small church, the true owners of this land. Is that what their definition says? It looks like the true owners are the Negroes that were found here. How can anyone else claim ownership? Oh, it must be Columbus. It must be Manifest Destiny. It must be Papal Bull, Dumb Diverses. Take their kingdoms, their dukedoms, their principalities. Now it belongs to the descendants or the successors, right? That's having cognitive dissonance, right? Now, after they've taken your kingdom, dukedom, principality, dominion, and possessions, 
and all movable and immovable goods whatsoever held and possessed by these Negroes. And when they reduced you to perpetual slavery, <coughs> they've extinguished your capacity to see the light, right? They're trying to be safe, right? They've extinguished your capacity to see the light so that they could be safe, right? Copper color race is found here. They are now the descendants taking the title of American and they put you in perpetual slavery and to apply and appropriate to himself and his successors, the kingdoms, the dukedoms, the counties, the principalities, the dominions, possessions and goods and to convert these Negro copper color races, copper color tribes to convert them to his and their use so now they're using you they're poisoning you and using you and profit they're selling you and by secure by this having this this secured said faculty the king alfonso we're talking about this is the permission from the pope to all of these motherfuckers to invade all negroes to take your kingdom they brought a Hebrew interpreter to talk to you looking for the Grand Khan. Or by his authority, the aforesaid Infante justly and lawfully, <laughs> bullshit, has acquired and possessed and possesses these islands, lands. You thought this was bullshit. It's about your islands, your lands, your islands, your lands. Negro, where's your land? I'll wait. This ain't about you. Who is it? What nation don't got no land? No place called Negro. No place called Black. And no motherfucking place called African American. So it looks like you've been duped with these titles that are actually just adjectives. Oh, I'm a Moor. Well, where's the land of Moor? It's everywhere. It's all. Where is your land, Negro? Because they're keeping you asleep. What tribe are you from? You are more. Which tribe are you from? Because you're keeping us to sleep. Because until we're tribal, we don't comprehend that our islands and our lands, our harbors and our seas have been jacked, stolen, that we as certain tribes were put in slavery and other dark tribes were not. Why? Treaties. So now we have islands and lands in this Motherfucker sitting here talking about, ah, oh, man, it's all good. The small church is the true owner of your land, Negro. My warning is going out to the small church. The true owners of this land. The true owners of this land. Why? Because he's getting it from the Papal Bull Dundee verses that says to jack your islands and your lands and your kingdoms and dukedoms and principalities your dominions your possessions and all movable and immovable good whatsoever held and possessed by you to convert you to their use their profit to take your islands and lands and harbors and seas and they do of right belong and pertain to king alfonso and his successors is that what this motherfucker talking about is that why he said that uh the small church Rightfully, this land belongs to the church. Well, who's the church? Who's the church? Who's giving the papal bull? So he's saying, yeah, it belongs to the papal bull. <clears throat> it belongs to King Alfonso and his successors. So whatever king invades you, substitute the Alfonso with whatever king they're using. And his successors or his descendants, right? So now you have a descendant giving away your land. Now, is he an American? No. Is he a copper color race found here? No, but fuck it. Fuck my definition in 1828. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Screw all that. We've now extinguished your capacity to see the light. So now it's our land. You're on the level of a beast of the field and we want to be safe or else we have to, you know, have cognitive dissonance and say you know what uh, uh we're the descendants we have the titles it's now our lands we now have your islands your lands and your harbors and seas and it belongs to this king alfonso and his successors 
The Negro has no land, but the successor of these invaders do. The Negro had no land, but the descendants of Europeans born in America do. Now they have the land and title of the copper colored tribes. So-called Negro. One more time, because you might think you might get cognitive dissonance. Listen to this motherfucker. The true owners of this land. Wow. Whether it is by your heritage of blood, but also if your heart is in it. So either by your heritage or blood. So there is an admission that someone has an heritage and a blood and a birthright. Because he can't truly deny it. It's in their dictionary. Copper color races found here by the European. So whose heritage was hijacked? Whose heritage was invaded? And if someone else's heritage was invaded outside of your own, can you give their heritage away? Can you give their inheritance away? Can you truly give away their kingdoms, their dukedoms, their principalities, dominions, possessions, movable and immovable goods? Can you truly put them in slavery forever, perpetually? Can you take their islands and their lands for the successors or the descendants of Europeans, the descendants? Can you tell us whose land this is, Mr. Man? Can you truly claim my great granddaddy's wallet? And this is called Cognitive Dissonance Hijack 101. Any clues about either? It is, my warning is going out to the small church. The true owners of this land whether it is by your heritage of blood, but also if your heart is in it. Wow. If your heart's in it and you live here, it's yours. If your heart's in it and you live here, it's yours. Spoken like a true hijack. And that's what's called dodging the hijack. You better get this. I'm telling you folks right now, you better get this. You that live up to an ideal are unaware that this ideal can be and is being destroyed. It's being taken from you. But not for the obvious reason that you think. They aren't fighting Christianity to take Christianity from you, but rather to keep your pathetic minds following and believing that it is real and it is all you need and you must let yourself, make yourself, force yourself to do anything to keep it. Because it's going to save you just like it did the billions of dead before you. Now, unless you're a special one in a billion, or one in 25 billion perhaps, this is history happening right now. This is history. I'm warning you all about this is history. Over and over again, just newer technology each time. And how come man allows this? How come Christian man allows this? Because Christian man came over here to convert or die. Yes. Christian man came over here with the papal bull. Christian man has to allow this. Because Christian man is the successor. Christian man is taking the kingdom, the dukedom, the counties, principalities, dominions, possessions, and goods. Christian man wants to say, nah, it's our kingdom. It's our dukedom too. It's our county and our principalities and dominions. Your dominion, Negro, is our dominion, Negro. Your inheritance, copper color race, tribes, found here, is our inheritance your title copper color race is our title we are the cons now we're the americans now we have the inheritance we have the promised land we found it we like it here and now it's ours 
We found it. We like it here. And guess what? As long as you like it too, it belongs to you. Going out to the small church, the true owners of this land, whether it is by your heritage of blood, but also if your heart is in it. If your heart's in it and you live here, it's yours. Not like that. I mean, no one's trying to, you know what I'm saying, brutally, you know, uh, 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 you know, kick out and, and, and hurt people, you know what I'm saying? But if you come with the mentality that it's yours, it's mine because I deserve it. It's mine because I have an entitlement. It's mine because I have an entitlement. This is an inherent synthetic program. He's going to talk about living in assimilation. He is the synthetic program that cannot comprehend outside of his cognitive dissonance entitlement. He has an entitlement disorder to give away the inheritance of another people to give away the inheritance of the American to give away the inheritance of the tribes that are here in their promised land to take their titles as a descendant as a descendant or as a successor as a descendant or as a successor using this same bullshit framework that is a poison a parasitic poison let's be parasites Wherever I spread, it's mine. Wherever you like, it's yours. Whatever is, is here in God's green earth belongs to me. No, motherfucker, it never worked like that. You have lots. Every tribe has a lot. One tribe doesn't go to the lot or the inheritance of another tribe to claim it as their own because they like it. That shit is not reality. That is the illusion. That is the cognitive dissonance. You could be half awake, 25% awake. The most dangerous thing is when somebody believes they're 100% awake and they're still putting you right back to sleep, especially as a descendant. And they ignore the copper colored tribes. I'm only saying it because they're saying it. I'm not making this shit up. They are saying it out of their own mouths and writings and all that, that you are the American. So what gives... A descendant born here the right to give away the inheritance of the American. In this world and you're sticking to something that you don't have that many clues about either. Bang. It is, my warning is going out to the small church. The true owners of this land. Whether it is by your heritage of blood, but also if your heart is in it. If your heart's in it and you live here, wow. it's yours. You better get this. <laughs> you better get this. <laughs> all right, man, let's get the rest of it, man. I'm not going to keep letting me tell you all this shit. I'm going to tell you right now, you better listen. Unless you get your heads together with other like minds, then your strengths together. Your like and dislike strengths utilize everything possible. And then the fight for humanity gets started, folks. One person, one at a time, killed by a SWAT team or a sheriff's deputy. That's bullshit. That ain't going to make a dent. They're Who's he talking about? He might, he got such deep cognitive dissonance. He's literally telling you your story and doesn't even know it. He's just talking to the white Christian. In reality, he still has to mention, oh, you know, uh, I know certain people who are born here too. And if you're born here, that's good. It's okay if you're born here, but it's ours too. I know you got blood ties here and this, and this, and this, but it's ours too. Self, that's the way I'm going to die, by myself. Oh, man. Because they're not going to keep letting me tell you all this shit. Oh, look. Yourself, force yourself to do anything to keep it. Because it's going to save you just like it did the billions of dead before you. Now, unless you're a special one in a billion or one in 25 billion, perhaps. This is history happening right now. This is history. I'm warning you all about this is history. 
over and over again. Just newer technology each time. And how each time they invade you, they get newer poison, newer technology. Remember, they experiment on your ass, on your melanin. A man allows this. How come Christian man allows this? Hmm. Generation after generation, the same old excuse. Folks, I'm telling you now, you are surrounded. If you don't get your heads together, you are going to die by yourself. That's the way I'm going to die, by myself. Because they're not going to keep letting me tell you all this shit. I'm going to tell you right now, you better listen. Unless you get your heads together with other like minds, then your strengths together, your like and dislike strengths, utilize everything possible. And then the fight for humanity gets started, folks. One person, one at a time, killed by a SWAT team, or a sheriff's deputy, that's bullshit. One at a time, Negro, you're getting killed in the streets by police, right? That's bullshit. That ain't gonna make a dent. They're, that ain't gonna make a dent. They're gaining in that. They're putting on more and more cops all the time, more and more surveillance all the time. Single Every Negro they kill, they get money from the trust that's in their corporate name. Killing people out more and more all the time. Well, I'm single, motherfuckers. <laughs> Now, I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> the time for talking is past. You better pick everybody that you can trust with the judgment of one that is deemed righteous. And if you deem yourself righteous, then you better pick your first person carefully. Then the two, you and whoever you pick, you have to judge the trust of a third and then three, the trust of a fourth, and so on. All that should have one last choice, good or bad. Now I'm here to tell you, if I had a crew and I captured a few people that I knew were killers, they had killed before, shot people's dogs all the shit, shot people's cars up who wasn't even armed. I mean, hundreds, not just one incident, many incidents, hundreds and hundreds not tens, not dozens, hundreds and hundreds of bullet holes in, a, in cars with women in them, no guns, no weapons, cars with unarmed men in it, cars with children in it. Folks, I'm telling you right now, you better pick everybody, and if anybody, if anybody that you think is possible, I would give them a choice. They change and they become a good person, or you do what has to be done. <laughs> so he's on his, you know what I'm saying? He, he's on his vigilante, man. And look, all he's telling you is to try up. He's saying in his own cognitive dissonance, disordered way. But at the end of the day, he is speaking to you and doesn't even know it. That's how Hawaii works. That's why we're sharing it, getting the babies out of the drop. What's the purified substance that this hijack is talking about? Even within his own spell. What is he getting at? What can we extract from it? Tribe up. Exactly what we said. You can do this. You can connect to the people around you. You can get a little piece of land somewhere. You ain't got to buy it. Tell you the truth. You can just kind of start setting up shop. You can do it without buying land. You can just start going. <laughs> setting up shop. There's so much get lostness out there. There's so much land. You're stuck in these little concrete cities getting frequencyed and fried and poisoned and your land is, is extensive you're not even close to being overpopulated this plane goes on forever there's land everywhere you don't have to be in concrete prisons he's just saying tribe up make your next move your best move make your team strong get your wall of protection all all bad should live in prison or be dead all of these killers, all of these people that inflict all of this misery and all of this threat, all this uncomfortable, all of this uncomfortableness, all of this crap. They don't do nothing about the chemtrails. They don't do nothing about the heart machine. They don't do nothing about the Pacific Ocean being poisoned. They're part of this ecosystem. 
But they must all be eating organic foods. There's nothing in the grocery stores. The honeybees are gone. I grew, me and a friend grew tomato plants this year. He said the other day, we should have a hundred tomatoes on them things. There's nothing on them because they haven't been pollinated. You can thank the FDA and the heart machine for that. The heart machine's frequencies disoriented the honeybees. They couldn't find their way home. They died of exhaustion. They died of... The elements killed them because they couldn't return to the hive for rest and shelter and to take their food back to those. And when those in the hive get hungry, they leave the hive looking for food. They get disoriented and they die. That's why, as far as I know, 80 to 85 percent of all the honeybees on the North American continent are now dead. And the heart machine did it. The heart machine, insecticides, the chemicals, the government did it to you. They're starving you to death. They're forcing you to eat their foods for birth control reasons, for cancer reasons, for pharmaceutical reasons, for the medical industry reasons. You're a bunch of damn test subjects. You're a bunch of guinea pigs. The thing about the simulation is, golly day, man, is a lot spending a lot of time just on one person's body. There's a lot, there's a lot, I'm telling you right now, anybody, you better choose who to leave and who not to leave because all the employ of the killers must show if they want to change, if they have been looking for an opportunity to get away from the killer outfit that they are a member of, if they want to change, and you better pick everybody carefully because they're going to have more snitches and more rats in the middle of anybody trying to put their heads together than Carter has pills. <laughs> you be, and they better become an asset and they better show allegiance to you and they better make sure that nobody suspects them of nothing. Because we're talking about humanity here. That's what I'm telling you. Your minds are hanging by a thread. And what stays your spirit, I'll be daggone if I know. Y'all can't see this stuff that's going on. You can't see history. You're afraid to look at certain parts of history. Why are you afraid? Because the You're afraid to look at certain parts of history. Well, it goes both ways, Mr. Cognitive Dissonance. You're afraid, you're uncomfortable, you're psychologically, internally uncomfortable with letting these people have their titles back. Well, you, you can get down to lay down. We don't need you to give us our title back. This is something that is natural. By law, we get restored. By law, by vibration, here we are. Everything that you were worried about, everything that you were afraid of not being, not being safe, and we would be safe if we can extinguish the Negro's capacity to see all the creator, all the light, our work would be complete. Then they would be beast. They would be animals, right? Instead of us, they would be beast. And we would be safe. Instead of us being afraid and being beast, they're just trying to flip it. Get that drop from natural by law. Get in Hiram's classroom. Get in the family's classroom. Get into the root of it all. Teach me to be priestly. Paco. Get in the family's classroom. AD, what it do? Isaac, what it do? Get in the family's classroom. Enjoy the vibration. Because all we're getting at is that they're flipping the script. They are the beast of the field. And they will never be safe because you got the drop, you got the light, you got the capacity to see the light. You have the what? The ancient love song. They are just successors trying to hijack using fake ass documents to do it. to get our dismount man man love to uh let us find the truth man we dropped this on us man a while while back man we started getting on the samuel seawall man the selling of joseph right let's see how uh, wow vibrate activate Throughout all this, we vibrate. Throughout all this, we activate, man.
Come on, come on. Let go, let go. Don't be on that play, play. Yeah, it's just called The Selling of Joseph. Um, you know what I'm saying? We're talking about the ancient love song and the excellent new tune, they say. The most excellent new tune. Hold up, let this thing load up. About to make our dismount, man. Why, why? Because when there's an ancient love song and they deem it to be an ancient love song, then that means it's a love song forever. And when they try to give you a new tune and it wasn't natural, it's never been natural, not by law, not by, not by vibration, then you have a whole nother thing, man. A whole nother reality. I'm gonna let that load up, get that dismount, get a few more minutes of this. The realization is gonna be so strong in your face, you're gonna get pissed. Mm. And if you don't, I don't understand you. I can't understand you at all. The fluoride and the electromagnetic frequencies have taken you. You're completely taken. If your senses don't tell you this shit is terrible, what's happening, what has been happening, what happens for thousands and thousands into millions of years behind us, people keep dying, the evil keeps killing them, nobody gives a shit. All the paid floozies, the prophets, these stupid idiots out here who further want you to stay your hand and they don't even know what the hell they're talking about. They don't have enough knowledge in the word of the Bible to even profess anything. They ought to be meek as mice. You folks better wake up. I would advise you to listen to this video again because I can guarantee to you, I bet you it ain't a friggin' single one of you, possibly a few, a few men. But 99 out of 100 of y'all that hear this video, there's no way humanly possible you can let it soak in with one viewing. And I don't need the hits. I don't need the subscribers. I'm looking to die any day or any night. And that's a fact, Jack. I know it. Look at what I'm saying. I'm trying to encourage y'all to do some research to find out what's holding you back. What's holding you back from meeting somebody? I got no family. I got nothing. And the ones in my family won't listen to me. There ain't enough people telling the truth. And I'm not talking about the Bible truth. There's a much truth in the Bible, much common sense. Psalms and Proverbs, both of them terrific books because it's common sense. It makes good sense. Treat your neighbor like you would have your neighbor treat you. Well, I'm telling you, we are under the control and the domination of the ones who think completely opposite of that and they're gaining leaps and bounds generation after generation. It's no turning it around until you get your head straight. And as long as you're letting something block you, you'll never get your head straight. You'll do like your dad, your granddad, your great-granddad, 10, 20 generations off. You will live the way you are, and you will die, and you didn't do nothing to benefit nobody. You didn't try to help anybody. You only worried about yourself. You need to talk to people. You need to start this right away. And I'm telling you right now, if you don't get control of this government and these tectonic weapons and this out of, out of control law enforcement, if you don't get them, if you want the people to stop shooting your dogs and fucking with you all the time, then threaten their money. Stop shooting your dogs. We want them to stop shooting us. We want them to stop shooting our tribe. We want them to stop jacking the copper color races found here. Stop jacking the titles because you keep poisoning us. And then you take our titles as descendants and say, oh, as long as you like it, here's yours. Cognitive dissonance. If you're a descendant of a European born here, are you an American? Only by your own definition. 
But what is the definition? I know you love it here, but you need to restore these so-called Negroes. You might be afraid of them. You might feel like you're not safe. You might feel like you need them to be the beast of the field so you could be safe. That's your own synthetic gridlock. But when you overcome and you know what's been talked about in 1832, don't be afraid of this history, Mr. Man. Because we are not your beast. And no, you're in a tribal land and you're not safe. Now, you want to be down? You want to be down? Then be down with the copper colored tribes because they're coming back. They've always been here. You called them niggers, nigers. You called them niggers and nigers, right? You called them niggers and nigers right here, right? Come on. Let's see if we can get that. American Indians, man. Hopefully, man. Let's see, man. What we got? Nigger, nigger. Pop right up. They called you niggers and nigers. Where? This is the Oxford English Dictionary. Nigger. Oh, they're hiding it. They're hiding it. They're hiding it. They're hiding it. Here we go. Nigger. A dark-skinned person of any origin in early U.S. In early U.S. Copper color race found here. In early U.S. Use usually with reference to American Indians. Pause it. Read it. So you're telling me that the term nigger... <laughs> Niger or Negush Naga is now referred to a dark skinned person of any origin, but in early corporate United States use, it was usually, usually, man, normally in reference to American Indians. Why would it be normally in reference to American Indians? And why is that the definition in the Oxford English Dictionary and the Webster 1828? Copper color race found here. So these Negroes were called niggers. These copper color Negroes in America, the American, were originally <laughs> called Niggers, American Indians, copper color race, Indians, copper color race, Indians, copper color race, Indians was who they referred to, not somebody from Africa. It was referring to you. It was referring to the American. It was referring to the American Indian. It was referring to the copper color race found here. We're just talking Samuel Seawall. Come on, let's get this dismount. We're talking about an excellent new tune and perpetual bondage. Ethiopians and stuff. Oh, yeah. Here we go, let's get it. I know it's a little small, I'm just going to read it. This is from Samuel Seawall. This is called The Selling of Joseph. He says, God expects that Christians should be of a more ingenious or ingenuous and benign frame of spirit. Christians, he's talking about themselves, should carry it to all the world. All right, so they're spreading their bullshit. Now listen up. As the Israelites were to carry it one towards another, factor in the Negro. They were supposed to carry this, this song from one to another. Now it says, as for men obstinately to persist in holding their neighbors and brethren under the rigor of perpetual bondage, 
We're talking perpetual slavery, dumb diverses, right? They're invading you. This uh, Samuel Seawall is like, look, man, this shit ain't cool that you're putting them in perpetual slavery based on the papal, papal bull. All right. So for those that are, you know, under the those that are persistent in putting these Negroes here in perpetual bondage seems to be no proper way of gaining assurance that God has given them spiritual freedom. So this seems to be no proper way of gaining assurance that Hoa has given them spiritual freedom. Our blessed Savior has altered the measures. Now we're talking Jesus. Now we're talking Zeus. E Zeus, right? So now he said our blessed Savior. He's not talking about Hoa. He's talking about Zeus. Has altered the measures of the ancient love song. This is written in the 1700s. So their Jesus, their Zeus, their Christianity, their convert or die. So-called missions and pilgrims, right? Pilgrims make pilgrimages to holy lands. Pilgrims came here. Pilgrims came here to a holy land. And they brought with them Zeus. And Zeus has altered the measure of the ancient love song. And set it to a most Excellent new tune. So Jesus, Christianity, their God of war, Zeus, has altered your ancient love song, Negro. Copper color race found here. American Indian that's now being called a nigger because it was what? Usually, normally referring to you, Indian, when they said nigger, they were referring to the American Indian. They were referring to the Negro tribes, copper color tribes, which is their definition of American, not the descendants. They weren't called niggers, right? So now you have this excellent new tune. It says this is not a proper way of gaining assurance that. Hawa has given them spiritual freedom because you are spiritually free, right? Their blessed savior has altered the measures of the ancient love song and set it to a most excellent new tune, which all ought to be ambitious of learning. Really, we should learn the new tune and forget about Hawa, forget about the ancient love song. And then he says that these Ethiopians, remember, Ethiopia is a, is a, uh, you know, a, a very, uh, you know, I'm saying what you call it, like a vain term. You know, what I mean, it's 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 a term for all dark skinned people in all regions. Right. So these Ethiopians, as black as they are. So you're being called Ethiopians here, Negro. You know what I'm saying it's just a very mundane term for dark people. It, Ethiopia is not a place. Abyssinia is the original name. And that's not a place. It's a vast region of dark people, just like India. It's just a term. So these dark people, these Ethiopians, as black as they are, seeing that they are the sons and daughters of the first Adam, the brother and sisters of the last Adam. Who's that? Noah. And the offspring of God or Hawa, they ought to be treated with the respect agreeable. And this is in 1700s, my people. 1700s, you got Samuel Seawall telling you that their Zeus, their blessed savior, has altered the measures of your ancient love song and set it to a most excellent new tune. And that you, you Ethiopians, as black as you are, seeing that you are the sons and daughters of the first Adam, the original, the original, the brothers and sisters of the last Adam, the continuation, the seed. And the offspring of Hawa, your secure breath, you ought to be treated with the respect agreeable. A respect of those that have a kingdom, a dukedom, and the principalities, and not be put in perpetual bondage. No, because you are the daughters and the sons of the first Adam. You are the original American, applied to the originals, or copper color races. All praise Hawa. Let's get this quick dismount. 2017. Story over here at Newsweek.com. Authorities are treating August solar eclipse 
The first in 99 years? Like it's the end of the world? Once I read that, I'm like, what's going on, you know? And I see what they're talking about with respect to the convergence of so many people in areas that aren't used to this type of influx in, in just people in general. For instance, Salem, Salem, Oregon is expecting a million additional people in that community up there. Idaho Falls, most of these areas are looking at somewhere around, I think, a million additional people. Well, those communities aren't facilitated for the additional a million people in a lot of areas. One thing that they're expecting is cellular blackouts. There's not there's not going to be enough towers and bandwidth to go around. So that's going to create cellular blackout zones in a lot of these areas. That's just one of many things. It's like a domino effect. Porta potty shortages. I mean that's something that definitely needs to be considered. Ambulances stuck in gridlock. These are just conditions that could arise from so many new people going to areas that simply aren't used to that type of crowds. Here's another thing that's that's happening. Uh, where did I see it? The Red Cross. Here we go. The Red Cross is preparing hundreds of emergency shelters in the 12 states that will see the rare full eclipse in case other emergencies that occur while millions of travelers are away from home. And they're talking about everything from earthquakes to heat waves to hurricanes could cause thousands to need immediate shelter. Hospitals are preparing for more cases of heat stroke, twisted ankles, car crashes. Um, Idaho Medical Center, they're particularly worried with so much traffic, normal deliveries of medicine and supplies won't arrive on time. So their hospitals up in Idaho are stocking up right now on uh, emergency supplies. Another concern, cellular service towers aren't meant to handle the capacity of an additional half a million to a million people per state. Cell phone, GPS, and smartphone internet services will likely be non-existent in the thin blue line zone. So that's something that you need to be prepared for. Uh, cell phone companies have a priority channel for the government and emergency agencies, and that's it. The rest of them aren't going to be able to handle the, the, the normal service from uh, customers. Hospitals are turning to beepers and landlines during this event. So that way, if doctors need to be reached, they can... Oh, and they're even asking the employees to provide a number of a, of a neighbor that has a landline in case they can't be reached by these beepers. Um, you just this on and on and on. Uh, radio... Oh, with the Red Cross will use ham radios to communicate when the cell phone networks go down. And they're pretty much saying that they are going to go down. But its staff and volunteers working on emergency response will have some access to top priority uh, emergency cell channels. Given all the hype around this event, how should the uh, <laughs> Eclipse Gypsies get ready? What they're recommending, which most of you probably already know, is pack enough food and water in case you get stuck in gridlock traffic for hours. Print the directions that you need, as you likely won't have access to GPS, um, which that's true. And, let's see, GPS likely won't be an option where you're staying. Don't wing it and expect to find a hotel room the day before the eclipse, or you may end up in an emergency shelter or sleeping in your car. All they're saying is come prepared and bring your patience, because there's going to be a lot of people. They're basically breaking it down to a million, which is going to be good for local economies in some respects. Um, could be a downfall 